name of Jesus. In the name Amen. of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, well, the, the message title uh, is uh, Come Out of the Tombs. And I'm going to just describe or give you a definition of what he gave, what the Holy Spirit gave me about the tombs. And these are tombs that are in the um, the the physical realm, and they become very real uh, to individuals. And one is discouragement. One another tomb is depression. Another tomb is disease, and another tomb is despair. And so I I could have listed a lot of others, but those were the ones that the Holy Spirit uh, gave me that we are going to. Uh, talk about tonight and we're going to talk about how do we come out of those tombs uh, when we find ourselves in one of those or we have a friend that is in one of those tombs or we have a family member that's in one of those tombs how do we help them and how do we come out ourselves? and you know there's a song that that came to my heart as I was uh, studying for this message and it was uh, it's called softly and tenderly uh, and it's um uh, it's this it's the song that was being played the night that I went forward and accepted Jesus as my savior and and it and it goes a little bit like this uh, softly and tenderly Jesus is calling calling mm -hmm. for you calling for me dee, 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 dee. but it says softly and tenderly he's calling for us <clears throat> and he's saying come out you know he's saying come out of anything that the enemy has tried to put you in whether it was worry or doubt or unbelief or which led to these other things these four d's discouragement depression disease and despair are all caused by the enemy. Yes. And it starts out when we fall into the temptation, when a person falls into the temptation of worry, yeah. our anxiety, because those are traps. Those are traps that will put that individual into one of these tombs now a tomb is very dark it, there's no light there there's no life there and so that's what we want to stay in we want to stay in the light and we want to stay in in life with with jesus hallelujah yeah. and so we're going to find out how to do that tonight and then you can pass this message along to other other people and um, and I think about um, it says in Isaiah forty two verse twenty two, and I'm going to go ahead and and just read that quickly uh, to you. And this is Isaiah forty two verse twenty two. Also, before I go any further, I want to thank you for your prayers uh, for us while we were in Texas. Uh, the Texas ministry was awesome and outstanding, and we had uh, five individuals uh, that received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, praying, you know, praying in their prayer language, and that was on the ranch. We went to the ranch on, on Friday morning and ministered. Uh, we, we did many, many things uh, during that time that we were gone. And our flights were on time, and we give the Lord all the praise, and we thank you so much uh, for your prayers. All right, I am in Isaiah 42, verse 22. It says, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all snared in the holes, and they are hidden in the prison houses, for they have become prey, and none delivereth. For a spoil and a nun saith restore. And so this is um Isaiah is is saying this uh about God's people that the enemy wants to come and steal, kill, and destroy 
and put them in prison houses. He wants them to, to go into institutions. He wants them to, uh, to feel like they're trapped and they cannot get out. There are many, many people that are like that. And they go through that day after day after day. And I know um, the, the times that I would go into depression and I would walk through the Sunday school rooms and down the halls of the church building that we uh, were members of. And, and I would sit there in the Sunday school room and I would just cry and cry and cry. And, but there was none to help me. There was no one that spoke to me that, that restored my joy, restored my peace. And, and so uh, this, this is why this message, I, I believe, is so um, important uh, to my heart. is because I've been in all four of these, all four of these deeds, discouragement, depression, disease, and despair. I have been in all four of those tombs. And it's not a good place to be. And the Lord doesn't want us there. He wants us restored. He wants the, his people to be free and to have liberty to go forward into their purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's go to Mark chapter five and let's just look at some people that were trapped in a tomb. In Mark chapter five. The very first verse of that chapter. Now, Jesus has already um, <clears throat> helped his disciples through the storm. He's the one that spoke peace be still to the storm. And so they're just coming out of seeing Jesus setting them free and giving them peace. All right, the disciples... Are, are, are right there with Jesus. And uh, in verse one of chapter five, it says, and they came over into the other side of the sea, into the, into the country of the gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Now, let me say what an unclean spirit is, because We've got unclean spirits. We've got familiar spirits. We've got seducing spirits. Um, and so what is an unclean spirit? It means that there are is um, an impurity. There's impurity in their heart. And, and this causes them to do evil and wicked things. And it says here, uh, and this man was doing all those things who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could tame him. No, not even with chains. You know, they uh, a, a person who is controlled and possessed with a, with a demonic force, they become very, very strong and very powerful. I remember the very first time we went to Honduras, uh, we took a medical team with us. And I was standing on the mission, the mission um, porch, and I saw this woman get off of a little boat because we were on an island and uh, of Roatan. And this woman got off the boat and she came. She was stumbling around. She couldn't, uh, she didn't have good balance. And she went into the medical clinic and, and I asked the, one of the, the missionaries that was there, I said, who is she? And they said, well, it's a woman who is demon possessed and she's come to get medication. She wants the medicine that they have. And, and so she wants pain pills. And, and so the woman went into the clinic, but she came out and she was very, very angry. And you could see that she was upset she was screaming, her hands were flying all over the place. And there were five men that tried to control her and every one of them, she put them on the ground. She defeated every single one of those men. And, and, that, and she was 
uh, demon possessed. And so this man here, he was filled with demons and unclean spirits, and he lived in the tombs. That's where he lived. Okay, and it says here that he was not able to be controlled because that he had been often bound and gotten loose and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Now, this is another thing that we have seen in different uh, countries that we've been in, especially with the teenagers and the younger generation. They cut themselves and they um, um, try to, and that, that's not, that's not tattoos and, and branding, but that's, but that's, they literally cut themselves and they have scars all over their their arms and their legs and their and their bellies, and um, it says, and when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and he worshipped him. Hallelujah! And so I'm going to give you three ways to come out of the tomb. There are three ways: faith, hope, and charity. Faith, hope, and love. Those are the escape routes to get out of any tomb, any darkness, any discouragement, despair, disease, faith, hope, and love. Hallelujah. It says here that this man saw Jesus and he knew that Jesus was the answer to his predicament. And, and Jesus was going to bring him out of the tombs. Hallelujah and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou not torment me. Now, this was not the man speaking, but these were the demons inside of him who knew that Jesus was the light. Woo, hallelujah. And he's our light. He's my light. He's your light. Hallelujah. And it says here, that Jesus just spoke and said, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And then he goes on and asks his name, which normally Jesus does not do that. And you do not find that very often in the New Testament when Jesus was walking on the earth. But he said, what is your name? And the, the demon said, "My our name is Legion because there's many of us. There's many of us that have put this man in the tomb. But see, those demons were, were trembling because Jesus, they knew who Jesus was. Yes, that's right. They knew who Jesus was. And when we operate in faith, hope, and love, the enemy's going to know who we are, that Jesus lives on the inside yes. of us, Amen. and we do not have to be in the tombs anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Lucy. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Sophia. Praise the name of Jesus. I pray for all of you today. I said, Lord, let them be there to hear this message. Oh, hallelujah, because we're going to come out of the tombs tonight. We're going to come out of, of any discouragement, any depression, any despair, any disease that has tried to come upon us. Oh, any muscle aches or pain. Uh, we're, it's gone in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. So we're talking about the man in the tombs, and he came to Jesus. And when he came to Jesus, what did he find? Faith, hope, and love. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that brought him out. That brought him out. And we know that the demons had to leave, and Jesus sent them into the pigs, and then the pigs jumped over the, the cliff, and it was gone. It was done. Hallelujah. And there was liberty. Go over to Galatians. I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. He says, I want you to be set free yes. and I want you to stay free. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In Galatians chapter five, verse one, if you're writing down these scriptures, it says, stand fast, therefore in the liberty or the freedom wherewith Christ has made you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't go out. Don't 
Don't go back into the tomb once Jesus has brought you out. And the way you stay out is through faith, through hope, through love. Those are the three that remain. They will always be there. Hallelujah. But he says, I want you to stand free. I want you to be free. Yes. I want you to stay out of the tombs. Yes. Hallelujah. You don't have to go into the tomb anymore. You don't have to be depressed anymore. You don't have to be despaired anymore. You don't have to have disease. Hallelujah. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to accept this. You know, that's what we were told. When we were told that Amy Elizabeth was going to die, we were told you're just going to have to accept that. You've had her for a little while. I had one woman tell me, well, you've had her for, for a little while. And that was a blessing. But now the Lord is going to take her away. No. If we had accepted that, she would be dead today. If we had accepted that I had terminal cancer, we'd be dead today. I'd, we'd be dead. <laughs> I'd be dead. Hallelujah. I would be dead today. I know it. Dead as a doornail. Woo! He wants you out of the tombs. He says softly and tenderly, I'm calling you yes, to Lord. come out. Amen. Come out, come out, come out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's go over to John chapter 11. You know, Jesus dealt with the darkness, didn't he? We have to deal with the darkness. Yes. When, you, when you feel darkness, coming upon you uh depression is darkness when you feel like you don't want to go on anymore when you feel that darkness when you when you feel despair that you don't know the answer and you don't know where you're going to find the answer and and uh then darkness comes in and we and a person begins to stumble and lose track of who they are and that's what the enemy wants. If he can get you off track, he can defeat you. And so that's why we've got to stay on track. Amen. We've got to stay in faith. We've got to stay in hope. And we've got to stay in the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, the enemy does not like for me to bring this forth tonight because. He knows that when the truth comes forth, the truth will overtake any type of lie. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In John chapter 11, they come and they tell Jesus that Lazarus is dead. And I'm in um, John chapter 11, verse 14. And they said unto Jesus, Lazarus is, and no, then Jesus said unto them plainly, well, first of all, he tried to soften it a little bit. And he said, uh, well, he's, he's asleep. But then he just came out plainly and said, Lazarus is dead. He's in the tomb. He's in the tomb. He's in the darkness. Okay. And then it says in verse 15. And I am glad for your sakes Hallelujah. that I was not there. Yeah. To the intent that you may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. All right, Jesus was saying, hey, you know, follow me and you're going to see something supernatural and you're going to see what God can do. Hallelujah. With God, all things are possible. Yes, amen. You know, and I know that many of you have seen what God can do yes. in your in your life, in your family's life, what God can do. Yes, amen. Because all things are possible with him. Yes. Hallelujah. Do you know why faith, hope, and love will always remain? Have you ever thought about that? Why? Why will those three remain? I'm going to tell you why. Is because all of those are God. Hallelujah. 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 God is love. God is hope. And God is faith. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. 
God will never go away. He's always been, and he always will be. Yes, amen. He's eternal. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And those three things, faith, hope, and love, are eternal. Yes. And the enemy cannot, ooh, listen to this. <laughs> listen to it. The enemy cannot get to the eternal things. Hallelujah. He can only get to the temporary things. Oh, wow. It's good. It's good. He can only try to make changes in your life temporarily. Come on. It's good. The eternal things he can't touch because they belong to God. Hallelujah. For instance, Lucy, you love baby Luke, don't you? Do you love baby Luke? Yes, I do. If, if the enemy came and told you, uh, oh, you don't love him anymore. Would that would you accept that? No. 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 Because your love for him is from God. And it's eternal. You will always love him. Yeah. You will always love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so they go off. The disciples follow Jesus to where Lazarus is. And uh when Jesus comes, um, in verse 21. Uh, then he said unto Martha, uh, or Martha said unto him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatsoever you will ask of God, God will give it to you. Now, she's putting out her faith yes. right there. Yes. Do, you, do you see that? She's saying, you know, I know that whatever you ask God, he's going to do it. But I know that even now, he will give it to you. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Hallelujah. Now, think about where Martha's faith was. Okay? See, faith is now. Now faith is. I'm in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is. Hallelujah. But she's saying here, and Martha said unto him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection and in the last day. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. He was saying, Martha, do you really believe? Do you really, are you really walking in faith? Hallelujah. Because if you're really walking in faith, listen to this. I'm listening. You listen. If you're really walking in faith, you see it right now hallelujah Woo! glory hallelujah. i see my finances right now yes i amen. see what i need right now amen Whoa, amen. hallelujah amen that's good Jerry. you see it right now okay let's go on jesus said i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth on me though he were dead yet shall he live and people take this out of context and say, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to, after we pass away, well, then we're going to live with Jesus. But what, what was Jesus saying? He was saying, believe right now. Right now, if you will believe, your brother is going to come out of the tomb. He's going to come out of the darkness. If you will believe uh, the Lord right now, you will come out of any, any tomb the devil has tried to put you in. Hallelujah. And whatsoever and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Hallelujah. He's asking Martha, do you believe this? And she says, yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said so, she went away and called Mar Mary, who was sitting in the house. Let's move on down. We see that Jesus, the shortest verse in the Bible is verse 35. Jesus wept. Now, why did he weep? He didn't weep because Lazarus was dead. Why did he weep? I believe that that, that compassion rose up in him so strong. God's love rose up in him so strong that that is why he began to cry. Jesus wept. And, and then the Jews said, behold, he must have really loved Lazarus. <laughs> and some of them uh, could not have this man which opened 
the eyes of the blind have caused even this man not to die. Jesus began to groan in himself. What does that mean? He began to activate the spirit of God on the inside of him. Hallelujah. And that's what we can do. Hallelujah. That is what we can do. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is all about. We are going to activate the Holy Spirit in us. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what Jesus did. Ooh, praise the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. He began to groan in himself. And then he said, I'm ready. Take away the stone. Take it away. Take it away. But Martha, the enemy still had a hold of Martha's thinking. Yes, that's right. She was still thinking in the natural. Come on. She was still thinking. See, if you really want to come out of the tomb, you're going to have to believe the Lord to bring you out because faith, hope, and, and love are eternal things and they're supernatural yes, things. Yes, amen. They don't come from your flesh. Come on. Yeah. My flesh does not, faith does not come out of my flesh. And hope does not come out of my flesh. It's an anchor to my flesh. It's an anchor to my soul, but it doesn't come out of my soul. Hallelujah. Lord, let this message go yes, deep, yes, deep, Lord. deep inside yes, of George and Joy and Jenny and Lucy and Sophia and whoever else will watch this video in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, go down deep inside of them, Lord that they will remember this message, that they will walk in this message, and they will come out of any tomb that the enemy has tried to put them in. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, take away the stone, Martha. And Martha says, oh, you know, he, he's been in there four days. He's going to stink. He's going to stink by now. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, if thou wouldst believe, that thou would see the glory Hallelujah. of God. Amen. Lord, we want to see the glory yes, of God. Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to see the glory in God. Yes, Lord. Oh, the glory of God in, in everyone that's on this, this video. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was, was laid. See, there were several people in there. Why did he call his name? It's because if he had just said dead come forth, then there would have been lots of individuals come forth out of that tomb. But you see, he only he only called forth Lazarus. And he and he and he said, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and he said, Father, I thank you that thou has that thou, thou hear me. You hear me. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, yes, Lord, you, for hearing us. You hear us. Lord. Yes, you're hearing us right now, yes, Lord. Amen. You're hearing amen. every heart right now, Lord, amen. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I want them to believe that thou hast sent me. And when he said that, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Hallelujah. Some people say, well, you're just too loud, Sister Sherry. <laughs> you're just too loud. <laughs> but you know what? Jesus called forth Lazarus with a loud voice. Yes, amen. He wanted Lazarus to hear what he had to say. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when I went to that ICU and Mark had been in a coma for four days and they were in his organs had turned black on the inside of him and they said he was dead and they were going to take off all of the machines i did not i did not with a quiet voice call him forth lazarus come forth mark come forth hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. and lazarus came forth out of the tomb I don't know, you know, the, the tomb um, might have been many things, but I know that it was dark, and I know that it was evil, and I know that it was from the enemy. Oh, right. Hallelujah. Because 
Lazarus had been sick. He had some type of disease. And so that's one of my D's tonight. Uh, we don't want, we don't have to have it. We don't have to accept it. Uh, can you say amen? amen? And Jesus said, and he was dead and he came forth and he was bound with, with a grave cloth all over his, all over his body. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I just read Galatians 5, 1. This says, stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. Amen. He has gotten you out of the tomb. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't go back in it. You don't have to go back in to depression, discouragement, despair, disease. You don't have to go back. Hallelujah. Because he's saying to you tonight, be loosed Amen. and be set free Amen. and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. Woo! Glory. Lord, let us walk in faith. Yes, now, Lord. what is faith? Faith is believing. Faith is trusting the Lord. Even when everything around you says the other direction. Even when your finances say you need more. Even when your body says, I'm still having pain. Even though when your mind says, well, I'm just not thinking clearly. I, there's confusion there. Even when all of that junk is going on, you can say, I believe the Lord. I believe the Lord. I believe the Lord that all my pain is gone. Yes, Lord. Oh, I hallelujah. Believe I believe the Lord. All confusion is gone. I believe the Lord. All confusion is gone. I believe the Lord that, that I am set free. I believe the Lord that I am set free. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. That's what faith is. Yes, amen. That's what faith is. And if we go over to Hebrews chapter 11, chapter 11, starting in verse one, but then, you know, this chapter is called the chapter of the heroes. These are individuals who believed God, even when the circumstances said, there's no way there's no way. There's no way when 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 the doctors say you've got terminal cancer, your flesh is going to say, there's no way that I'm going to live. I know I've been there. And time after time after time, test after test after test. I had to hang on to God. Amen. I had to hold on. Thank you, Jesus. I had to hold on to my faith. I had to hold on that the Lord said that we had the victory. And I kept going over that over and over and over again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I mean, in verse one, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtained a good, good report through faith. We know that the worlds were made. Amen. God spoke it out of his mouth. Hallelujah. And see, faith is in your mouth. Is nigh thee even in your mouth. That's where your faith is. So what are you saying? Are you saying, are you speaking out faith? Are you speaking out the word of God? Or are you speaking something else? But that's not, that's not my message tonight. My message is on coming out of the tomb. Yes, amen. It says, and, and it says, by faith, Enoch, verse 5, was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony Amen. that he pleased Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It pleases God. Yes. When you have faith. Yes. When you have hope and when you have love. Amen. Because that's him. That's him. You know, it says, and love is the more excellent way. And I asked the Lord, I said, why does that say that? Why does it say that love is the more excellent way? And do you know what he told me? He says, because it's me. <laughs> I am love. God is love. Hallelujah. <laughs> and that's, that's why it's because, that's why it's the more excellent way. It's because it's God's way. Hallelujah. Amen. That's Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. By faith, Noah, 
built the ark. By faith, let's go over to verse eight. But by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out to a place that, that he should not receive for his inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing where he was going. Okay. He believed God to take care of him. Amen. 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 Wherever God sends us, Amen. He's going to take care of us. Amen. Wherever God sends you, yes. He's going to take care of you. Yes. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Now let's go on. It says, uh, in verse ten, for Abraham looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker was God. Amen. Abraham saw beyond. The circumstances amen and that's what we have to do we have to see beyond any sickness we have to see beyond any type of problems with our family amen. or are with our finances or are with our um with our marriages we have to see beyond all of those circumstances amen hallelujah it says, through faith, Sarah received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child. Sarah believed when she was 90, Hallelujah. 90 years old, oh, wow. to conceive seed, and she produced a, 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 a child. We haven't gotten there yet. Not 90. <laughs> Not 90. That's the truth. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> you know, I I pray this over people, all young <clears throat> women uh, all over the world. Um, the Lord has 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 just spoken to me about that if I would speak this over them, that He would give them a child. And what I pray is that their womb will be strengthened to receive seed, Amen. and that they would have a child amen and those individual those women have become pregnant and delivered a child amen and so i give the lord praise for his word his word is the truth amen his word will make us whole and bring us out of the tombs amen. hallelujah amen. hallelujah and so if we go over to hope um Hope is is a expectation. I'm expecting God to move. Yes, I I'm do. expecting Jesus to come back. Amen. 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 I'm longing for His return, <laughs> but I'm expecting Jesus uh, to take care of me. Yes, for Jesus to pay my bills. I'm 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 expecting from from the Lord. Amen. And that's hope. Yes, it is. That's what keeps you out of the dark tombs. Woo! Hallelujah! You know, several years, well, a lot of years ago, maybe 25 years ago, in the middle of the night, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, don't walk among the dead. Don't walk among the dead. Because the dead are going to keep you in the tomb. <laughs> That's right. Now, who are the dead? Those that do not believe. That's right. Those that have doubt and unbelief. Come on. Those that are not Christians. Come on. Unbelievers. Yes. Do not walk among them. What yes. does that mean? Doesn't mean that you can't speak to them or pray for them or or uh, tell them that you know that Jesus loves them. What does that mean? Not to walk with the dead. Not to do what they do. Not to agree with them. Not to agree with them. Not to go where they go. That's right. <coughs> you have to agree with people to walk with them. Amos 3.3. 3. How can you walk with someone if you're not in agreement with them? <coughs> so we're going to expect <coughs> the Lord to move. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews uh, 6 19. I'm bringing this to a close. Hebrews 6 19. We need some hope. Need some hope. Amen. Amen. 
It says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Now, there's a lot in that one, one verse right there. Because as we enter into behind the veil, no. remember the veil was rent when Jesus went to the cross and he died on the cross. It says that the veil was rent. That means that we can walk from the natural realm into the supernatural realm. Hallelujah. And it's the supernatural realm that brings you out of the tomb. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's good. That's good, Lord. Amen. It's his faith. It's his hope, expecting him uh, to do mighty things for you. And it's his love. His love is what brings people to, to Jesus Christ. It's not scaring them to death. It's not talking about they're going to go to hell and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and making them fearful. No. It was the love that God had for me that brought me to him, that brought me out of all the, the things that I was involved in. Amen. That's what brought me out. Amen. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Amen. Calling for you, calling for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it says in 1 John 4, um, that God is love. God is love. Let's just go over, and that's my my last scripture. Is First John, chapter four, verses seven and eight. Beloved, let us love one another. Amen. For love is of God. Yes. And everyone that loveth is born of God. Yes. And knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Yes, amen. And so faith, hope, and love will bring you out of any tomb. Any tomb. It does not matter. It does not matter how dark it is. It does not matter where it is or what it is. Those three things will bring you out. Amen. Faith, hope, and God's love. Amen.